Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com. It's our email address. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email concierge for questions about this or any of our watches. Email us for pricing tmasso at the 1916company.com. Today, we are discussing a titanium limited edition of eight pieces for 2023. This is the Rudis Silva RS23. So out of grade five titanium, 44 millimeters in diameter, but only 12.5 millimeters thick and 51 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This is a fascinating watch, not just a new brand and new model for the channel, but also a completely new oscillator concept I've never seen before. So we'll explore this one together. In terms of how it fits, the answer is large, but wearable. I'll move a little bit further away from my wrist so you can better see it in proportion. This is a watch that I could wear and would wear, but I wouldn't wear it on a wrist smaller than mine. So 16 centimeters circumference and up. There's your down the barrel shot, your cuff shot, revealing the watch to easily slide underneath the cuff and then over the top, which always exaggerates the width of the watch a little bit. Taking a look at the strap, it's high grade. We have alternating gloss and matte surfacing on this large rectangular scale, symmetrical scale, alligator leather strap, large rectangular and symmetrical scales, the best and most expensive cut of the hide. You can see that the lugs are drilled very close to the case to move the pivot centers of the strap inboard for a better small wrist fit. It also allows less daylight between strap and case for a more integrated look. And then curved spring bars are used so there's no impediment to the range of motion of the strap. Taking a look, you can see on the bottom, round scale alligator leather. The best straps these days are gator on both sides. It's more expensive, but it lasts longer. So this watch was specced the right way. And as you could see, it's a brand new strap, no crimping, no gouging. The buckle includes the company logo. It is fixed by screws and bars, and then it has a medley of polish and satination, as does the case. In fact, the case has three different surfacings. We have vertical satination on the case band. We have polish on the lug hoods, as well as on the crown. Then we have media blast in the recesses of the lugs, as well as on the crown structure itself. Rolling all the way around, you could see that the watch essentially has a flat and featureless bezel, but it's also a monoblock. Everything loads through the back. So you've got this little bevel on the side, and then the bezel goes flat. So the case and the bezel are all one piece, so there's no seam visible between them. We also have this dramatically boxed and cambered sapphire. A sapphire that complex is always an expensive piece. The attention to detail here really is superb. The harmonious oscillator. This harmonious oscillator is actually two toothed balances that are meshing and beating in opposition. And I've never seen anything like this. This is unique to these guys. It is their thing. They first surfaced in 2009, and the design has evolved over time, featured in this format, but also on tourbillon regulators. You can see there's an awful lot of fine watchmaking here, finish and engineering. It's quite unique. Taking a look at the track outboard, you can see we have these gilt style transferred numerals every five minutes on a matte silvered minutes track. We have inboard of that a railroad style track that is stepped up in silver white. And then we have hands over the center that are skeletonized and brushed and rose gold gilded. We have several fascinating finishes here. As you can see, there's media blast. Then there's also mirrored anglage on multiple levels of bridges. We have straight grain satination. We have real rose lay of the guilloche down there, and you can see a sort of a, a peacock pattern. And we have circular satination on wheels. We have snailing on the barrel covers themselves. If you look carefully, you can see that the ratchet wheels atop the barrel are satinated on their tops, and you can see that they're beveled on their interiors, which is a level of attention to detail rarely seen. The bridge immediately adjacent features two sharp interior angles where bevels meet, and then the double balance bridge has another sharp interior angle where its bevels meet. You can see that the quality of the beveling is quite high. All of the screw heads are black polished, handsomely decorated, and the watch has many different focal planes. You can see the depth is excellent. 
we have two different balance wheels beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. And they both have flat hairsprings, but if you look at where the stud holder is located, that is the outer edge of the hairspring, it's 180 degrees apart, so that the effect of gravity or the motion of the wrist will always act equally and opposite on these two balances. So when one is caused to run fast, the other by an equal and opposite margin will run slow. Without the complexity or space demands of a differential, They've achieved the same kind of effect as you'll find on a Grubel Forcy double balancier or a Philippe Dufour duality. It averages out these two equal and opposite oscillators. It is a very cool concept. You could see that there is a Liga formed spring loaded driving wheel just below that. It has little teeth that double as springs for smoother meshing. And so the average of these two oscillators is actually used to drive the hands. And you could see that we have a stack of driving wheels that drive a seconds hand, which is in blued steel, and then the rose gold gilded hands just below. Now there is a stop seconds function. What I find fascinating here is that when you stop the seconds, it takes a few moments for the oscillators to slow down. It's different, and it's charismatic, and it's fun, and I like it. This is a very neat watch. We have twin barrels, which appear to be arrayed in parallel in this case, which means they drive the train simultaneously. That maximizes the torque to the escapement rather than extending power reserve, which you'd get with barrels in series. You want maximum torque because you're moving two balance wheels with each impulse. And you can see this is not like an F.P. Journe resonance where the wheels don't actually touch. They do mesh with their toothed edges. And so you have a single escapement just under my finger that's driving the two oscillators, so you need more force. Hence, you have these twin barrels. You can see they're quite large with snailing on both sides. We also have more of that high quality beveling, media blasted profiles, 37 joules, again, 72 hour power reserves. So while these barrels are arrayed for maximum torque, they still provide a large amount of power reserve given the power intensive oscillator. The keyless works with the setting lever, the clutch, the clutch spring, the winding pinion and the crown wheel with brigade teeth separating them. You could see all of that on the reverse side. You could see that the little parts in steel are well done. Polished, satinated, beveled, and you can even see the little locating pins to locate the clutch spring that have been polished on their tops. The wheels are all satinated, and they do feature internal bevels, which is a nice piece of attention and detail. And then you can see there's a sort of gratte main, or hand brushed or hand roughed finish on the underside of that bridge that gives it a very industrial look, which is super cool. All of this 30 meters water resistant. And as you can see, this is number three of eight. If you love this watch and you find the watchmaking concept to be compelling, reach out to us. We are tmasso at the1916company.com.